Browns and going up against the Broncos for a trip. Fall at all. George Hallis, who was the head coach of the Bears at the time, was visiting the track, and a jockey came up to him and said, Hey, coach, there's this great little running back down here at Florida A&M. You ought to give him a look. Well, Hallis scouted him, signed him, and Willie the Wisp went on to become one of the most exciting and elusive ball carriers of all time. In 1957, George Hallis took a tip from a jockey at Hialeah Racetrack in Miami and placed a bet not on a horse, but on a player named Willie Gallimore. Gallimore, number 28, came to the Bears as a late-round draft choice from tiny Florida A&M and proved to be one of the last great steals before scouting became sophisticated. Elusive and swift, Willie was the Ferrari of running backs, possessing a passing gear other players only dream about. A rival defensive lineman once said, he was not hard to bring down once you got your hands on him, but getting your hands on Willie was unbelievably difficult. Willie was nicknamed Willie the Wisp. And in reality, that was the way he ran. All of a sudden, you'd see him break out into the open, and uh, you don't know where he came from. Willie was unbelievably quick going downfield. He, he wasn't uh, sideways or this way. He just zoomed down the field and seemed to be so fast, nobody could catch him. You ever try go hunting and a rabbit's in an open field, and you try to shoot a rabbit, or you ever try tackling a guy like that? He had speed like you. He, one motion, the same speed, be able to cut. The only difference between him and McElhenney, Willie was faster. To me, it seemed like he did the 109-2 going like this. Fantastic. Willow the West, Willie Gallimore, puts the Bears on their way to another score. Willie Gallimore reverses his field. Bobbles the ball, gets it back. Shakes off tackler after tackler on a spectacular touchdown gallop. Willie Gallimore could turn the corner faster than most fellas could run forward. I've seen him do that. Gallimore never gained a thousand yards in a season, but statistics were not the measure of this man. He painted pictures in the open field. Each run was a Rembrandt, and as a collection, they became a gallery that hung in the memory. It seemed like everybody forgot it. And he's made some runs that I've never seen a back do yet. I have never seen anyone, and I don't believe you have in any of your film, seen anyone catch him from behind or from an angle. He was only nine, six feet, but he seemed like he'd run as fast as he had to. Gallimore was as gifted a pass catcher as he was a runner. And in today's game, he probably would have been turned into a wide receiver. He could get downfield so fast on the defensive halfback, the safety, the free safety, that the free safety was not free anymore. This was the greatness of two great halfbacks in professional football, have to affect. We were playing a game uh, in 1963, I guess it was, and. Uh, the game was very close, and, and I hit Willie with a pass about in the middle of the field, man, and he just caught the ball and zoomed through everybody. I mean, it was just like, it was unbelievable. I mean, they, he was so quick. He had two knee operations the year before the 63 season. I think he broke something like six tackles. You know, just having a knee operation is bad enough, but he had two of them in one year. I mean, he was an amazing runner. I always thought he was one of the best runners, and I never could understand why. He did get more recognition on her. Willie Gallimore. Willie the Wisp. Stay warm with a jacket from Academy.